Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor from 161 to 180 AD. Among Roman emperors, he has been called the philosopher. He was a practitioner of Stoicism, which basically means complete control of your emotions. Now the interesting thing is that throughout his life, he used to keep a journal and would try to figure out different ways to understand life. This was a journal that he only kept for himself and was never intended to be shown to the public. However, many years after his death, people found his journal and the writings in it were so profound that we now get to see how his mind worked in his book called Meditation. Meditations is a significant source of the modern understanding of ancient Stoic philosophy. They are considered by many commentators to be one of the greatest works of philosophy. Now this book is divided into 12 parts and this is one of the most dense books you can read in my opinion. So it's not possible for me to cover all the aspects that Marcus talks about in this video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the five most profound lessons that I've learned so far. Number one, don't judge people. Marcus Aurelius being a Roman emperor met all kinds of people. He had many enemies and it was normal for people to plot the emperor's death in those days. However, in spite of this harsh reality, Marcus always stressed the fact that we should not judge people for who they are. He says that indeed we will meet some terrible people in our life, but we all have faults, so what gives us the right to be angry at them? Marcus says that we all come from the divine, so good and evil are both part of the same whole. So since we're all connected to each other through this common thread, why should we hate each other? Marcus wants us to pay attention to the nature of people and our surroundings without any judgement as to whether they are good or bad. For example, let's say there's a kid who bullied you in class. It's very easy for us to judge that bully and say that he's the worst kind of a child. But had we looked a little deeper, we might have seen that this child was abused at his home and that kid is just doing what his parents taught him to do. Now this doesn't mean that we need to tolerate these people or bow down to them or not stand up to them. It just means that remembering human nature and realizing we all come from the same source stops your heart from being consumed with anger for other people and it gives you a better chance of living a fulfilling life. We can't guarantee fame or fortune, but we can keep our minds calm and free from injury, a state superior to both pleasure and pain. Freedom is the control of our minds. Number two, appreciate the little things. Aurelius tells us to be mindful of the little things like the cracks in a loaf of bread, the texture of figs and olives, and the expressions of wild animals. Even mundane things have charm, he says. Marcus says that a man who appreciates nature, appreciates nature in all of its forms. You don't just appreciate the sun without appreciating the rain. You cannot just appreciate the cute faces of a dog or a cat without also appreciating the way a snake moves gracefully across the grass. Being mindful of our surroundings and developing a deep sense of appreciation for everything there is, is what keeps us grounded in reality. Keep in mind, this is all coming from a Roman emperor. Back in those days, such a man could have anything he wanted. He could have had as many slaves as he wanted, as many women as he wanted, as much food and money as he needed. And yet, he urges us to find beauty in the smaller things in life. This just goes to show you that although you could have access to all the material wealth in the world, the truest and most profound beauty can often be found in the smallest of things. Number 3. Your mind is your biggest asset. Marcus tells us that we can always find solitude in our own minds. If our minds are serene, we will find peace and happiness. He stresses on the importance of keeping your thoughts pure throughout the book. Monitor your thought always and see if they're peaceful and align with your values and morals. If you're not in control of your mind, you're no different than a wild animal responding to its environment. Our consciousness, the ability to choose the thoughts we think is our biggest asset that we need to keep cultivating throughout our lives. Whatever you think in your inner world is reflected in your outer world. If you're an angry and pessimistic person who believes that all people are bad, then all you're going to find in your life are bad people. You need to learn how to control your emotions. Whenever anything happens that triggers certain emotions inside of you, instead of reacting and acting out, ask yourself why did that event make you feel a certain way? 
Ask yourself if it's valid for you to react in this situation or if it's better to let it go and move on. Marcus tells us that we should not be affected by what other people think of us. He says that no matter how good of a person you are, someone, somewhere, will have something bad to say about you. Marcus advises us to not let those people affect our lives. Imagine a bird sitting on top of a tree, singing a song early in the morning. One man starts screaming at the bird. What an irritating sound. This bird is making too much noise. The bird replies, I don't care man, I'm a bird and I'm singing my song. Another man walks up to the bird and says, Wow, what a beautiful song. This sound is lovely. The bird says again, Thank you, but I don't care man, I'm a bird and I'm singing my song. We all need to be like that bird, where we do what is true and right for us, regardless of whether people like us or not. Number 4. Do the work. Every morning, get up and do your work. Don't complain about how hard life is, just do the work. Marcus says that we should do what's good for society and do good things even if other people don't recognize us for it. There are so many people in this world who only do good things when they're in public, just so other people think highly of them. This doesn't make them good, we should do good things even if no one is looking at us. Good things done in private are still good things. Think of the tree that gets big and gives us fruits. The tree doesn't care if people think good things about the tree. The tree just produces the fruit for everybody to enjoy. So when you do your work, be like the tree. Produce fruits for other people to enjoy and benefit from. Number 5. Keep your ego in check. When you read this book, you quickly realize that Marcus Aurelius has no ego about who he is. When you look around you nowadays, you see a lot of people who get a little famous or make a little bit of money and they start having this ego about who they are. Marcus always reminds us that it doesn't matter if you're an emperor or a pauper. At the end of the day, we all face the same fate of turning into dust. So don't get attached to your worldly achievements. Be good to others and do your work diligently. So to summarize, don't judge people, appreciate the little things. Your mind is your greatest asset. Do the work and keep your ego in check. It blows my mind how much wisdom there is in this book. I always make sure to keep this book with me and flip to whatever page I feel like and reading something and it's always something profound. I highly recommend you get this book. That's all for now and thanks for watching.